So here we go, we've got two lights. Even light means no shadows. So we've got one light coming one way and one coming the other. So they should knock out the shadows. They're not gonna knock out the shadows absolutely perfectly. I'm just doing that, because as you turn the light, you can actually see on Tasha's face, well, I can, because I'm quite close, what's going on. Yeah, I think that's probably about the best play. I don't, can you see, look on Tasha's face. You see there's a shadow there. And all I'm doing is just turning the light from side to side to find the place where the shadows are the softest. You're trying not to giggle, aren't you? There we go. <coughs> interesting. There we go. Right. <clears throat> the reason I said interesting then is because the light isn't actually pointing directly at Tash. Some of that light is coming off this wall. These are little things to look at. Go and watch that introduction to flash thing I was on about, the one with the water in it, because that will explain about how light acts like water and bounces off things. Okay, setting up the exposure. To have even light, the way you do it is you meter one light at a time. So I'm gonna turn this one here off first. And we're gonna do this one. It should be the same as it was, because I haven't moved that light. So let's go for a flash, and that didn't work. I don't know why it didn't work, because I've accidentally pressed a button. There we go. That's giving me F8 and a half. Sorry, I did that wrong. Point the Invercone at the light in this instance. So I'm gonna hold it in front of Tasha's nose. That's giving me, yeah, F8 and a half. So what I wanna do is to make that one match that one. So, switch this one off. Plug the lead into this one. If I can find the plug socket, there it is, it's up there. You can't see what I'm doing, can you? There we go. Switch that on. Oh, I don't want to move that. So what I need to do is to make sure that I've got F8 and a half coming out of this light. As you can see, shadows at the moment because we're only using one light. And back towards the camera. <laughs> not bad, F8.2. That is so fractionally below what that one is, and it's pure fluke. If I needed to change it, all you have to do is just alter the power setting. Now this one has a switch like this, where you can turn it to different power settings. <clears throat> if I put it onto, let's say that one, and meter it again, so you can see what I'm on about. Yeah, it's giving me F16, obviously way too much, I want F8.2. Take that back down, meter it, F8.4. Isn't it weird, tiny little difference. I'm only me standing there, point that at the light. F8.2, good. That is so close as not to make any difference. If you need to make a minute adjustment to your exposure, if you think, well, I don't know, it's half a stop out, you can, if you have sliders, it's really easy, these don't. <clears throat> but just by moving that light forward by an inch, it would actually put a little bit more light onto Tasha. Right, so we've now got these two lights set with exactly the same exposure. So I'm gonna turn this one back on again. <clears throat> again, don't forget they're both slaved, so they'll go off together. Now what I need to do is to measure the light that's coming from the two of them. You may notice now the modeling lights, both lights on, those shadows have disappeared because one light is cancelling the other. For the most part, if you're a bit more advanced with this, you're gonna say, but what about cross shadows? Later. Right, this time we point the Invercone straight back at where your camera will be, not at the lights like we did just now. So, eyes closed, otherwise you have a big red dot. That is giving me F11.2, but 0.2 of a stop's not enough to worry about. So, light meter down here. Camera, which is somewhere, here it is. <coughs> There's not much room in here, so we're having to dance around each other. F11.2. So I'm just gonna put F11 onto the camera. I don't worry about the point two, it's not enough to panic around. Tasha Basha! <laughs> right, I'll tell you what, let's have a side, yeah, come on, let's go sideways on a bit. There we go and turn your head straight along your shoulder at me. That's it. <clears throat> and then put your chin down just a sniddly widdly bit. Cool. There you go. Look at that, completely flat, even light compared to all the other pictures we've taken so far. 
There are virtually no shadows on Tasha's face whatsoever. But suppose you wanted a couple of shadows because you might want some, but not quite as harsh as some of the ones we had before. Well, you can do a little set called key and fill. That means you have one light as your key light. That's the main light. That will put some shadows across your subject's face. But then you want to fill those shadows in just a bit. And that's where you have what's called a fill light. And the fill light is only going to affect the shadows. I'll set it up and then talk you through it when I've done it. Right, I've moved the lights around. We've got one here to the side and we've got another pretty much in line with Tasha from the axis of where I'm going to be shooting from, which is over there. This one is called the key light because this is going to be our main light. This is our key light. We're pushing light through the umbrella, which will cause some shadows on Nat's face. But then we're going to use this light here, the soft box, to come in from in front to soften those shadows. So we're going to need to set the lights with a differential. Metering time. Right, where is, where is, where is, where is my wire? Here we go. I'm going to set up the key light first. Now it's going to go a bit dark, so I've got to switch this one off. So I don't know if you can brighten it up, Janie. There we go. I don't know if you can still see me. Right, come around here, plug this in. <clears throat> so, let's see what the light is doing on Tasha. Now this time, I've got a meter directly off this. I'm sorry, you've got to go that way a bit so that you're not blocking the light. We're pointing the Invercomb straight up here at the flash, eyes closed. That's giving me F11 and a half. That's quite a lot of light. I think we should be okay. It should form some good shadows. We're now gonna set this light to be about two stops below that light. If you come around here and have a look at Nat's face, you see these shadows here. I mean, they, I don't know how they look in the video camera. To my eye, they look completely natural, but to your DSLR, they might look a little bit too dark. If I take a metering, metering, a meter from meter reading from there, F11.3, if I go into the shade here and point it back and see what it says, 5.6, not quite F5.6. Some of the light coming off that is bouncing off this white wall. If you have a bigger room, you won't have so much light coming back. But not to worry about it. Let's get this light set up, the fill light. So to do that, don't fall over the lead. Here we go, I need to turn, let's turn this one on so you're not plunged into darkness. Now I've got to turn this one off. Take the cable out and meter this one. Now, when you're using your own home studio, you're not gonna to have to keep metering all the time because once you've made up a lighting rig and got the exposure correct, <clears throat> you can leave it there and you can shoot loads and loads of pictures with it. I'm doing this over and over again so you get the idea of what's going on. That was F11. We now need to meter this one. So point the Invercone straight towards the light. That's giving me F22. That's way too much. That's more than that one is. We may have to juggle some more. So I want to bring this one down and see if I can get this one down to about five, six, maybe a bit over. So it's obviously gone much darker. James probably desperately trying to get an exposure to see me. That's F11 too. We're going to have to fiddle a little bit more here because Take that down some more and see what we've got. F8, right. We can't get a, a nice balance between the two, so I'm going to turn this one up some more. Does that make sense? So I've got F8 here, which is my lowest exposure that I can get. Let's turn that on so it doesn't go black. Get the cable out of there. The reason it's the lowest exposure I can get is because these lights are very, very powerful. If you're using 200 watt second lights, then there's a good chance you can get a much, much lower exposure. Let's just turn that one up a bit. Let's see what we got. Right, up into the light. F16. We should be rocking and rolling now. F16 up here. We had F8 here. 
f16 and a half so we've got a one and a half stop difference between the two different lights this should work turn that one on looking at nat's face i can see it i don't know if you can it's quite subtle there is still this side of tasha's face is a little bit brighter than that side not massively but a bit right the next thing we have to do is the overall exposure this is the one you set on the camera we've done the pointing at the lights and getting the differential between the two now we need the exposure for the camera both the lights are switched on plug in the lead fire them both together also be careful when you're doing this don't stand in your own light so i'm going to point that back to where the camera will be sorry hold it next to that's face Hold on a Nat's nose actually. Lights closed, F16 and a half. Even though that was F11, um, I can't remember what it was now <laughs> I'm getting myself in a muddle, but it doesn't matter. Even though that was very bright, the, the cumulative effect of the two has lifted it up a bit. Right, dump this down here, get my camera, come back over here. So, set that onto the camera, we want F16 and a half. There we go, F16 and a half, F19. Tasha Basha. Let's have you titting that way this time. Off to that direction and turn your face towards me, straight along your shoulder, okay? <clears throat> now, I'm shooting straight along the edge of this light. I don't know if you can see that, Janie. Even though it's really close to the line of view, it's not quite there. And because of the long lens, which is, has a narrow field of view, I can completely skim past it so it's not in my shot. That's the advantage of using a longer lens and being a bit further back. Right, Nat. You're being very patient. You have that dead look in your eye. <laughs> right. Do your chin down thing a bit. I think it'd be quite cool. Shake your hair forward a bit. Let's have a bit of hair out from behind your ear. That's better. That's cool. Look at you. Hey. Perfect. I love it when a plan comes together. I'm going to take one more like that. That's great. Keep your head back like that, Tash. You had it. That's it. Let's do that one there. And that's great. And I took a second one because you can see it a bit better. I'm just coming into the light so Jane can see me. If you look at this shot here now, these two that we just took, do you want to look? obviously. <laughs> the shadow next to Tasha's nose, they're very, very soft, even shadows. This is the great thing with your home studio flash setup. By learning how to meter it and taking a bit of time setting it up, I now know that that light will remain constant on every shot that I take for the next couple of hours. It's not like using a window, which is beautiful light, but it's changing all the time as the sun moves around and as the clouds come along, come and go and all that sort of stuff. So there we go, that's a real introduction to setting up your home studio. We'll get creative later on, but for now, just have a little practice with those two. I'm gonna see if I can blag a takeaway out of Tasha. <laughs> Isn't it? Oh, mate, oh. Well, I'll have to buy her one then, won't I? Yeah. yeah.